This is old mate's backyard tech. All right. About a year ago or so now, I think it was the middle of last year, I did a video as to why I prefer the 32C from Harrison Consoles. Now, be that a 3032C mixer or a 4032C mixer, it doesn't matter. The 32C platform that Harrison came out with is my preferred mixing console. A couple of days ago, I got an email from a viewer regarding two plugins that are available for Mixbus 32C. They want my opinion on those two plugins. Well, that's pretty easy because I've used both of them. And my opinion? It's Harrison. I think you guys already know the answer to this question. Mixing consoles. DAWs. Monitor and reference speakers. Effects and Dynamics Here at Old Mate's Backyard Tech It's Pro Audio time G'day everyone, thank you for tuning in Pro Audio time here at Old Mate's Backyard Tech Featuring of course Harrison Consoles and We're talking about Mixbus 32C for this one this comes off the back of a comment from a viewer by the name of... I've just lost it in the comments list. Brian Griffith. How about the Mixbus 32C channel plugin and the Mixbus 32C bus plugin? Alright. Um, I haven't used the bus plugin, but I've used the channel plugin. Now, I want to preface this thing by saying that a DAW, whilst it is exceptionally good, any DAW, but particularly Mixbus 32C, a DAW for a lot of us is the closest we'll ever get to physical systems in a recording studio. Okay. And there are a myriad of plugins available. And Harrison have done a lot of R&D into both the channel plugin and the bus plugin. Now the bus plugin I haven't used yet. I've had no need to use it. But the 32C channel plugin, right, with its phenomenal EQ and compressor, it's an expansion of the existing compressor systems available from the channel strip. Okay. I'll be honest with Brian, the 32C channel plugin is very good. Exceptional. The compressor is as accurate as you're going to get. The EQ has a sound to it that... How do I put this? It's got that analog warmth, even though it's in a digital domain. You get that analog. <sighs> Trying to say you get an analog feels probably not the way I would describe it. But you get that analog, almost pure emulation of what's going through the plug in. All right. It, 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 it's far more accurate and nicer sounding than the existing compressor available next to the fader in Mixbus 32C's mixer, all right? The EQ is an absolute bang on emulation of the channel EQ off a channel strip on a 32C mixer. Okay, I, I the bus plugin I haven't used, I haven't even demoed the bus plugin yet from Harrison. Okay, I, I haven't needed to use it yet. But I have used the 32C channel plugin. All right, and I've put it before the compressor in the bus or on the mixer strip. And I will use that over the existing compressor and EQ on the on the actual uh, on the actual mixer channel, okay? 
the the bus plugin I haven't used yet, Brian, so I can't answer that. I've had no need to use that yet, okay, because I use the 1178, I use my DBX-160s a lot, I use some of the SSL stuff and the API stuff, so I haven't needed the music I'm making. Those plugins have done what I want to do. Now, if they don't offer me what I'm looking for, then yes, I might have to have a sticky beak at the, at the bus plugin for 32C. But the channel plugin, the 32C channel plugin, and I cannot emphasize this enough. It really does give that signature Harrison mixer sound to your track. It's as close as you're going to get to an analog, uh, an analog plugin or or a physical iron plugin. Okay, um, I don't believe. And I say this wholeheartedly. I do not believe Harrison have skimped on that plugin. They've really worked hard on it. And I mean, Harrison work hard on everything they do. I know that. I follow them religiously. Right? I, I, I've, I've admitted it many times. I am a Harrison enthusiast. I have a great adoration for Harrison consoles. You know, I, I mix bus thirty two C is the DAW I use. I use it for music editing. I occasionally have to use it for for you know the audio I do for for old man's backyard tech on YouTube. I sometimes have to strip the audio out of a video and and put it through Mixbus thirty two C to get the plugins to you know the, the the right whatever you want to call it. Maybe the EQ that I want to use is for for something in. DaVinci doesn't offer me it. I've got to strip the audio out of the video, put it through Mixbus 32C, do the EQ work, re-establish re the audio, do the ADR and line post sync up, and then put it all back together. But the the the, the 32C channel plugin is just, I mean, that compressor, that compressor, I've only used the compressor and the EQ of the plugin because it's all I've needed to use. I don't, use things I'm not going to use. I don't test things I'm not going to need. That EQ, right, and that compressor function available with the 32C plugin, channel plugin, is off the charts. It is just a phenomenal plugin that suits Mixbus 32C. It's it, it's perfectly matched. Now, as far as the bus plugin is concerned, I haven't used it. I haven't needed to use it. I haven't made anything that warrants me getting it and demo demoing it. And I say that quite literally because nothing I have done at the moment requires it. My picture's awfully contrast bright, isn't it, for some reason? But anyway, um, so I haven't needed to do that, Brian, unfortunately, but... The 32C channel plugin, I cannot recommend a channel plugin highly enough. You know, I, I've you, I mean, I rely on my DBX 160s. You guys know that. I rely on my 1178 um, stereo limiter. I, I use my APIs. I use my SSL EQs because sometimes I really want to really hammer on something. Um, you know, and I use my. Um, L2 Ultra Maximizers, I use, you know, all of that. But some of the tracks I've made, uh, not recently, some of them I made, I have actually used that 32C channel plugin because it's given me the type of dynamic when it comes to compression or the type of EQ I'm really looking for in a, in a, on a, on a channel, in a channel. I guess you could say, because we're talking at DAW. So, Brian, to answer your question, yes, the, the, the channel, the 32C channel plugin is phenomenal. And kudos to Harrison as always, but the bus plugin, I haven't even demoed it yet because I haven't, haven't had a need or a warrant to get it. I haven't, I haven't found something that warrants me grabbing that bus plugin that's not going to do what I, I already need another plugin to do. Now, you know, if I make another track in the next couple of weeks or something, which is the plan, if I can get the time, 
and all of a sudden I, I've made the track and I'm like, hang on, something's not right here. I, I, I need something. I'll, I, you know, I may then go and get the bus plug in and, and see whether or not that gives me the dynamic I'm looking for. But as it is at the moment, no. But the channel plug-in, look, I've said this before about mixers, you know. It's the op amps and the mic pre's that, 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 that make, a, make a console. And you can emulate the hell out of anything you want in a DAW, but it won't give you that physical feel. Even if you have a DAW controller that has, you know, faders and, and, and you know, knobs slash pots slash variable resistors, whatever you want to call it, that allow you to make those minute adjustments. It's just not the same. But... You know, as I've said, you know, Harrison, Adore have done some of the heavy lifting with Mixbus 32C, but Harrison have added their own, I guess you could call it signature to the platform. And the plugins that they've released themselves, both with what you get with Mixbus 32C and the after plugins you can get as well from Harrison, like AVA and all of that stuff, you're not going to top it. You cannot top it. So in, in answer to Brian's question, the 32C channel plugin is phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. And I've used it. But the bus plugin I'm yet to use because I'm yet to need to have a, a need to use it. I don't ha I haven't made anything yet that warrants me going out and downloading it as a demo and finding out does it do what I need to do. That's probably the best way of saying it. Other than that, the 32C platform in itself, well, I'm going to sound like a broken record again. You're not going to beat a 4032 or a 3032C mixer console from Harrison Consoles, and frankly, I don't think you can beat Mixbus 32C. So, there we go. I have, the part of the reason I haven't shown you guys the 32C channel plugin or the bus plugin is because we know them. I know them. And if I show them, I'll get the holier and now know what all experts going, oh, you're showing me stuff I already know. Um, but I love it. You know, anything Harrison release with Mixbus 32C, I always have a look at to see, okay, is this going to give me something I need over and above what I'm already using? Or is it a nice to have? And at the moment, it's not worth me getting something that's nice to have because... I may not use it. See, I will admit, occasionally, and I've showed you guys this in the past as well, I've actually used the compressor next to the fader in the mixing con mixer window of Mixbus 32C. And that's often given me exactly what I was looking for. It, it, it offers me exactly the type of compression I need. Now, I'm not going to then go and go, all right, well, I'll use the compressor next to the fader on the channel strip and then go and add the 32C channel plug-in over the top of that and almost send the, send the signal backwards. And if you don't know what that means and you claim to be so intelligent, you're dumb. Because, um, I mean, there are instances where you may, you know, for creative purposes, want to over-compress the hell out of it and just keep compressing it until, the, you know, it's almost going in on itself. You know, it turns into a sour face. You know, that sort of thing. Um, I haven't needed to do that, but at the same time, I've also found that sometimes <coughs> the limiter, limiter level, leveler compressor next to the fader on a channel within the mixer window often will give me the type of dynamic I'm looking for. Not always. Sometimes it doesn't even come close and I'm looking for something else. But, you know, I guess, I guess you could say... 60, 70% of the time, that offers me what I want. The 30% of the other time, I'm looking for a plug-in. Now, be that the channel plug-in, be that um, another compressor from my compressors, maybe a limiter, maybe a noise gate, maybe an expander. Who can, who, you're never going to know. I never know, right? I'll make a track, right? I'll make a track, sequence it out, samples the whole lot. I don't know right off the meat of the bat, what dynamics, what effects I'm going to use until I've heard the track in full. 
right? So, you know, lay down your drum, lay down your drum, lay down your bass or your rhythm, lay down your melody, any vocal samples, sound samples, loop samples, you know, what have you. You're not going to know what you need to use as a plugin until you've played the whole track right through and then thought, okay, my drum track needs work. So, you know, EQ, effects, dynamics, gates, compressors, expanders, whatever. Then you've got to, you know, put that on, then listen to the whole track again. Okay, a little less compression. I've sort of pushed the drums all the way into the back. You know, so instead of them being nicely interlinked with the rest of the signal, you've sort of pushed them so far to the back that everything's sitting atop of it. And even if you have used makeup gain enough, you've still got the drums, you know, 25 miles behind the rest of the track. So I don't know what plugins I'm going to use until I've laid the track down, you know, so sequenced it out or what have you, and then played it back in its entirety, right? Obviously, playback, I've panned everything out by the time I've played it back. So pan it all out and then just play it back raw. Like I used to do when I was recording, you know, record a track to mag tape, leave the faders where they are on the desk, play the track back through the mixer console, pan it out, and see how it all sounds. You know, and, and only then are you going to know, you know, what are your EQs, what are your dynamics, what are your compressions, gates, you know, what effects are going where, do you need to tighten something up, do you need to let something breathe a little bit more, um... You know, is there some sort of, you know, harmonic somewhere in the mix that's just, you know, causing it not to sound right, so on and so forth. So, Brian, the 32C channel plugin, phenomenal. But the bus plugin, I haven't needed to use it because I haven't had a warrant yet to need to go out and get it. That's probably the best way I can talk about it. There we go. Stick around. Up next, question from a viewer regarding could I do what I'm doing now using the methods I used to use when I was actually recording. This will be a fun one to answer. This has been an Old Mate's Backyard Tech presentation.